Now that we've got our starting code, we've got our app up and running, let's take a look at all the files that we brought in for our project and how they're going to function in creating our app. So first of all, there are a number of folders that we don't really need to be concerned with. And those are the Android, iOS, and build folders. For Android and iOS, these both contain files that are specific to running our application on an Android or an iOS device. We're only really gonna to need to go into these folders when we integrate Firebase with our Flutter app. So we'll take a look at going into them in the next video, but generally speaking, we don't need to be concerned with them. The build folder contains all of our built assets, the built assets for our Flutter app whenever we run Flutter Run and attempt to run it on a simulator or emulator or when we start up a debug session. Again, these are all files that are really just important for Flutter to be working, but we don't need to go into it or make any changes. However, the first folder that we do need to be concerned with is this assets folder. As its name suggests, it contains assets that are gonna be important for application, and those are namely fonts and images, which are each in their own folder. Now I've included one custom font for you right here. We're gonna be using that for our header, the header or app bar that we're gonna display across our pages. And for images, I've included a number of images that we're gonna use in our app, namely, or usually as a no content image, meaning we're gonna display an image when we don't have any results for something where we just want to greet our users with an image before they actually use something like a search feature. So I've included these images mainly as SVGs or vector images. So SVGs are generally much smaller than what's known as rasterized images or JPEGs or PNGs. So that's why I've included them so we can deliver our app assets to our users as fast as possible. And note that all these assets are declared at the bottom of our pubspec.yaml file. So if you head down there, you'll see in this Flutter section, we can use our fonts because they're declared in this fonts area. And the same for images, they're declared with assets. And so to use them, we just have to reference the path to get to the respective file. So to use our font, we can just say assets slash fonts and then the font name. And then for each of the images, can select that by saying assets slash images slash whatever image that we want to use. Okay, now moving on, all of our source code is within our lib folder. And we know every Flutter app runs from a main.dart file. In that file, I just have a simple my app widget that for now just returns a text widget with the text hello world, which is what you see at the moment. And within lib, I've scaffolded out three individual folders that provide some structure to our source code. And there are models, pages, and widgets. Models are gonna be for modeling our app data, the data that we get from Firebase to kind of normalize our data. So right now we just have this user.dart file for modeling our user information. So to make sure all of our information is consistent, we need to deserialize our users, and that's what our user class is gonna be used for. Note that we'll have other models. They may just be combined with are pages. So moving on to pages. Pages are also known as screens. You may refer to them as screens within your Flutter app, but each of these pages, and I've already created these Dart files for you that will serve as our individual pages or screens. I've created them and included the widget itself, whether it's a stateful widget or a stateless one. And for each of the widgets, I'm just returning a text widget with its name to get us started. So to provide a brief overview of what these pages are gonna function as within our app, the activity feed that you see here is going to be where users see a feed, a list of all of the likes, comments to their posts that they've accumulated, as well as notifications about whether user is following them. Comments are gonna be for, as you would expect, all the comments related to a given post, so users can add new comments and see comments on this page. Create account is going to be where we display after a user signed in, an input where users can choose the username that they want. Edit profile is gonna be for editing profile information for a given user, such as their username or their bio. Home is going to be the page that's displayed whenever a user signs in, whenever they're authenticated. And on home, we're going to set our common app bar as well as our navigation using a bottom navigation bar. The post screen is just an individual screen to show all of a 
individual posts data on. Profile is going to be for seeing all of a user's information, a different user's information. So you can see their avatar, username, bio, all of their posts, and can choose to follow or unfollow them. Search is going to be for searching for different users to find different users that you can follow within our app. Timeline is going to be basically a feed that you'll see when you visit your home page consisting of all of your posts as well as all the posts of users that you follow. Upload is going to be for uploading media files as well as creating posts. And finally, we have this widgets folder consisting of widgets or functions that return widgets that will be used across these pages. So we have a custom image widget, a header widget, a post tile widget that will be displayed on the user's profile page, a post widget for displaying, for example, on your timeline, and a progress loading bar. You will have a circular progress as well as a linear progress. And finally, the last thing that we need to be concerned with here is our pubspec.yaml file. If we go up to the top, we see all of our dependencies. So as I mentioned, when we created our project, we ran flutter packages get, and we brought in everything listed here. So this on top of the boilerplate codes that, I, that I've provided for you within the lib folder should hopefully get us developing our app a bit quicker instead of having to create all, all of our files, the boilerplate of creating our widgets, and we don't have to also going forward add any new dependencies. All of them are gonna be listed here. So with that out of the way, now that you hopefully have a better idea of the different files that we have within our app, how we're going to be using them to build our application, let's move on to actually integrating Firebase with our project.